welcome again in the course module of communication engineering so in the last lecture uh, we were discussing about the demodulation of the fm signal in which we have already seen the uh, balanced slope detector okay uh, which is the frequency discrimination technique for the demodulation of the fm signal so now today we are going to discuss one more important uh, topic uh, related to the demodulation only uh, of the fm signal uh which is uh, uh, pll okay which is phase lock loop so generally the pll is uh, most popularly used for uh, demodulation of the fm signal because it can also be used in the uh, low signal to noise ratio conditions so this is very important topic okay so <clears throat> let's see how this uh, phase lock loop uh, uh, can be used for the demodulation purpose of the uh, fm signal so first we have to look at what is uh, this pll okay so basically a phase lock loop uh, is used to track the frequency in the phase of the incoming signal so how it will be used for uh, tracking the frequency in the phase of the incoming signal that we have to look at first so basically in the pll uh, we are having three basic components so first to try to understand uh, these three components the first one is the voltage controlled oscillator and the second one is the multiplier okay the multiplier and then the third one is the uh, loop filter so basically uh, in the previous lectures i have already discussed about the voltage controlled oscillator uh, in which i told you that uh, in the voltage controlled oscillator we need to give a certain uh, voltage input and that voltage is going to control uh, the frequency of the uh, oscillator okay so frequency of oscillation of the oscillator will be uh, completely controlled by the input voltage so this is what its name suggests like voltage controlled oscillator so voltage is controlling the oscillation of the oscillator uh, okay so its oscillation frequency will be controlled by the voltage so this is what we have already seen in the case of voltage controlled oscillator so suppose if we have any uh, vco or voltage controlled oscillator so the input will be our uh, voltage and then <coughs> the frequency that we are going to get that will be proportional to our voltage uh, e not so for example this uh, uh, instantaneous uh, frequency of the you know, voltage control oscillator will be given by this particular expression which is omega t equals to omega c plus c e not t so here you can see that c is the constant okay it is a constant okay of the vco okay so it will be uh, like measured in the uh, like voltage per unit hertz fine so that will be the uh, sorry it will be the hertz per unit volt fine so because uh, here it is omega c is in the radian so you can uh, write this as c should be in the uh, radians like uh, it can be written as uh, like radian per unit volt okay so when we are measuring omega c in, in radians so basically what is this omega c here represents so omega c represents the free running frequency of the uh, vco it means that whenever we uh, have uh, input voltage e not equals to 0 uh, at that time whatever we the uh value of the oscillation of the vco that will be uh, called as free running frequency of the vco that will be equals to omega c so normally we try to keep this omega c equals to the uh, carrier frequency uh, of the incoming signals so that we can uh, see in the later sections so first of all uh, we already know about the voltage controlled oscillator now we have to look at uh, how this multiplier actually serving as a phase detector okay or a phase comparator you can say that we have to first understand uh, basically it is not only the multiplier but it is the combination of the multiplier and a loop filter uh, is going to serve as a phase comparator or phase detector so that we have to look at so you try to see in this uh, slide okay so basically uh, a phased locked loop is actually a feedback system okay it is uh, uh, it much similar to a feedback system so here you can see this uh, particular feedback system uh, in which uh, what we have is we have a multiplier here okay uh, so we have one multiplier and then this uh, output of the multiplier will be passed through a loop uh, filter okay hs loop filter so basically this loop filter is a uh, narrow band low pass filter so you remember that it is a low pass filter narrow band low pass filter so this is a loop filter and then uh, in the feedback path we are having a uh, voltage controlled oscillator so whatever be the output okay that we are going to get uh, here okay e not t okay this e not t uh, uh, magnitude is going to decide uh, whatever be the magnitude accordingly 
uh, the oscillation of the voltage control, uh, control oscillator will be decided and we are going to get a certain uh, output of a certain frequency. So uh, let us assume that how this multiplier, basically multiplier followed by this loop filter is acting as a, a phase detector that we have to understand first uh, to understand the working of the PLL. So here we can see that here in the multiplier, uh, let us suppose that uh, the input uh, signal to the multiplier is A sine omega CT plus theta I. Okay, so it is having uh, initial carrier frequency equals to omega C, okay. So this sinusoidal wave is having a frequency of omega C T and initial phase is equals to theta I. So, uh, and then the another input that is uh, coming to this multiplier, which is the output of the voltage control oscillator that we are considering that, let us say this value is equals to V cos omega C T plus uh, theta naught. So you must be wondering, I have taken like A sine omega C T plus theta I and here I am taking V cos omega C plus theta naught, okay. So that will be evident later. I will explain uh, why I have taken uh, this uh, as a sign or this uh, this particular input as a cos, okay? Why we cannot take um, both as a sign sign or a cos cos, okay? I will be explaining you to uh, you in the uh, subsequent, uh, uh, means uh, in the coming section, okay? So I will explain you. So basically uh, here we have taken this to be a sign, okay? And here it is, we have taken this other, another input as equals to be cos omega ct plus theta naught. So now when this is the two inputs, okay? So when these two inputs will come to this particular multiplier, then uh, obviously the multiplier output will be the multiplication of the two, okay? So this uh, output, if we represent it by xt, okay? Then this xt will be equals to, uh, here it will be multiplication of this two. So it will be AB, uh, then cos omega ct plus theta naught and sine omega ct plus theta i. Okay, so now if we multiply this two and if we uh, use the trigonometric formula, it will be uh, easily you can get this relation x equals to AB by two. Uh, and then uh, we will be getting this sine theta i minus theta naught uh, plus uh, sine two omega ct plus theta i plus theta naught. So you try to get this expression, which is it is very simple to get. Okay, so once we are going to get this, uh, once we will get this particular expression, okay this signal xt will be passed through a loop filter okay you remember that this loop filter hs is nothing but our uh, narrow band low pass filter okay so when it is a low pass filter obviously any high frequency component will be rejected by this particular filter the meaning is only low frequency component is going to be uh, filtered out by this particular filter means uh, only pass through this filter okay only low frequency component so this component to omega ct plus theta i plus theta naught is going to be filtered out, okay? Because it is having a high frequency component uh, like two omega c, okay? And therefore this particular component will be rejected, okay? It will be filtered out. So only the component uh, that we are going to uh, pass through this particular loop filter is sine theta i minus theta naught. So if you uh, uh, if you understand that uh, after the loop, uh, loop uh, filter hs, okay? the output that we are going to get will be equals to E naught T and that will be uh, your this particular term, okay? AB by two uh, sine theta E. What is this theta E? So theta e is uh, nothing but the error in the phase, okay? And that error we have defined is equals to theta e equals to theta I minus theta naught. So now this is actually a time dependent uh, equation E naught T, okay? That will be equals to AB upon two and sine theta E where theta e is the phase error, okay? And which is defined as equals to theta equals to theta i minus theta naught. Now, uh, once we have this particular expression, okay? Uh, now we have to try to understand that uh, there are certain terminologies that we generally use for the PLL case. The first thing that we uh, use is that the loop is in the locked condition. So when we can say that the loop is actually in the locked condition, so that will only possible, okay? Uh, when the input and the output sinusoids have the identical frequencies, okay? So if input and the output uh, sinusoids have the same identical frequencies, at that time, uh, this uh, loop is said to be uh, in the uh, logged conditions, okay? Uh, and at this moment, you will find that uh, at this moment, uh, this loop will be in the steady state and uh, our theta i, theta naught and theta e r will be a constant value. Okay, remember that these things will be in a constant value, okay? So it will be a constant value. 
Now uh, try to understand this particular equation of E naught T that we have got here. Okay. And we need to get a plot between E naught T, okay, E naught T, and then we have to uh, plot in between this particular uh, phase error theta E. So we have to make a plot between this two, okay, because we have got this relation E naught T is means E naught is nothing but the output of this two uh, filter, okay. So uh, this is a function of uh, phase error theta E that we can see from this particular expression. So now, first of all, as we can see easily from this expression is because it is a sign dependent, okay? So when theta is, uh, is increasing, uh, obviously it is uh, following the sign variations, okay? So E naught T will be a sign variation, okay? So here, first of all, we try to understand one thing that let us suppose that uh, if there is a change in the input frequency, okay? Let us suppose initially uh, the input frequency was omega C, and uh, then at a certain moment, this omega C is going to change. And if this omega C is changing uh, from omega C to omega C plus K, let us say there is a change in the input frequency, then how this loop will behave that we have to try to understand. So once this input uh, frequency uh, increases, okay, from omega C to omega C plus K, uh, then this input signal that we have written here, like uh, a sine omega ct plus theta i, so please uh, uh, do not bother about this one here. It is just written a sine omega c plus theta i. So please remember that there should be a term t, okay? So that is not there in this picture, but it should be included, okay? Omega ct. So here it is, uh, uh, if we substitute omega c plus k into this expression, uh, we can write this input as a sine omega c plus k t plus theta i. And if you multiply this t inside, uh, we can further write this uh, input signal equals to a sine omega c t plus uh, k t plus theta i. And further, we can write this expression is equals to a sine omega c t plus uh, theta i cap, okay? Uh, where we can see that this theta i cap uh, is the variation. Actually, it is representing the uh, change basically, or the uh, instantaneous phase that we are going to get that will be equals to kt plus theta i. So here you can see that if there is a change in the input frequency uh, from omega c to omega c plus k, there is a corresponding change. Uh, what we can see is there is a corresponding change in the uh, uh, phase also, okay, and that phase is equals to kt plus uh, theta i. So basically what uh, we can see here is uh, phase is also increasing, okay, it was initially uh, theta i, okay, and now the phase becoming uh, theta i plus kt. So basically it is, there is a change in the uh, phase also. So basically if you see uh, whenever there is an increase in the frequency, uh, this initial phase that we had written equals to theta i is also increasing that we can uh, see from this particular expression. So when uh, there is an increase here, you can see that uh, the phase error that we have represented that is represented by this particular equation theta e equals to theta i minus theta naught. So when theta i increasing, okay, when we are increasing the input frequency, there will be a change or there will be an increase in the theta i. And because of increase in the theta i, uh, this also leads to increase in the theta e. Okay, here you can easily observe this uh, particular thing. Like when our uh, theta i is increasing, okay, obviously our uh, phase error will also increase. And because of that uh, increase in the phase error, uh, here we can see that our E naught T, uh, when theta E will increase, obviously E naught will also increase, okay? So that can be seen from this uh, graph also, okay? So whenever this theta E is actually increasing because it is a sinusoidal variation, okay, of E naught T, uh, the dependence of the E naught T is sinusoidal, okay? So whenever this theta E is increasing, uh, this E naught is also increasing, okay? So what we can understand from this, okay? What we can understand that we have to uh, see here. So basically what happens is whenever this input frequency is increasing, at that time, uh, this theta I is also increasing. And because of uh, increase in the theta I, 
space error that we are going to get uh, ultimately at this output of the loop filter is also increasing. And therefore, this uh, output voltage E naught T is going to increase. And we know that uh, in the voltage controlled oscillator, uh, when the input uh, input voltage, okay, whenever the voltage of the voltage, uh, external voltage that we apply to this voltage control oscillator, when its magnitude increases, the oscillation frequency will also increase, okay. So this is what we actually want, okay, we actually want. So what we want is this particular uh, complete PLL circuit uh, phased log loop uh, should be able to uh, track the input frequency. Whenever there is a increase in the uh, input frequency, okay, the same uh, increase in the uh, output frequency of the VCO should also be observed, okay, it should also be observed, right. So this frequency of the output of the VCO should also increase, okay so that this uh, uh, output of the multiplier uh, is going to give the uh, phase error equals to zero. Okay, so basically this is what uh, our uh, basic requirement is. Okay, so that we have to uh, do from this circuit. So you try to understand. So basically what we are trying to do is whenever there is an increase in the uh, omega c, there will be a corresponding increase uh, uh, in the frequency of the output of the VCO, okay. Even if you uh, try to decrease the uh, input frequency, a similar uh, analysis you can also do. And that time you will find that uh, this uh, decrease is going to be your like theta i minus kt, okay. That time it will be theta i minus kt. So when this uh, theta i will decrease, obviously this phase error is going to also change, okay. Uh, phase error is also going to change and that time this phase error will uh, reduce also, okay. So when it will reduce, obviously, uh, this uh, output voltage E naught is going to reduce and therefore it will try to reduce the uh, frequency of the oscillation of the VCO and thereby uh, this particular uh, loop filter or you can say it is completely PLL circuit uh, is actually going to track the change in the variation of the frequency. Okay, so this is how this particular PLL is actually either it is you can say it is acting like a phase detector or phase comparator. Okay, because it is uh, detecting the difference. Okay, theta e. Okay, it is detecting the difference because there is a phase error. Whenever there is a phase error, okay, between this uh, input frequency and the output of the VCO, uh, there will be a certain voltage that we are going to get at the output. Okay, and whenever this uh, two phases are equal. It, it means when theta i equals to theta naught, okay, when theta i equals to theta naught. If there is no phase differences, okay, obviously sine zero will uh, give you output equals to zero. So it means that zero output is giving you a uh, uh, equal phase, okay, that uh, it indicates that uh, the input signal to this multiplier is having equal phases, okay. So this is how it is actually comparing the uh, phase, or you can also say that it is also tracking the uh, frequency of the input signal. Now, if you understood these things, okay, uh, you must be able to uh, understand that uh, there will be a certain uh, range of frequencies, okay, only a certain range of frequencies uh, over which this PLL uh, can track the incoming frequency, okay there will be a certain only only a certain uh, frequency shift for example let us suppose if we uh, talk about uh, like uh, let us say the carrier frequency is equals to uh, somewhere around 100 megahertz and let us say that if there is a variation of the uh, input frequency uh, plus minus variation is about uh, uh, 100 kilohertz let us say okay then uh, you can uh, add uh, 100 kilohertz to 1000 megahertz and you can also subtract uh, 100 kilohertz from the 1000, uh, 100 megahertz, okay. So that time the range, whatever we are going to get over that uh, range of variation of the frequency in the input is only going to be tracked by the VCO, okay. So what I'm trying to say is that there will be a limited uh, range of frequencies in the input uh, shift that can be tracked by the VCO. It is not like that any variations can be tracked, okay? 
like if it is omega c equals to 100 megahertz and if you talk about that uh, let us suppose if we are uh, trying to uh, shift the frequency by 1 megahertz whether it will be able to track the same frequency uh, whether it will be uh, possible that the vcu will be tracking that variation in the frequency or not so that we have to understand okay so there will be only a finite range of frequency shift okay over which this pll can uh, please you remember it is just pll uh, by mistakenly it is written triple l so just follow it pll okay so the finite range of frequency shift over which a pll can track the incoming frequency so generally uh, when it is tracking uh, this uh, incoming frequencies okay that uh, range of frequency is called as a uh, holding range or lock range okay you remember that this definition it is holding or lock range now uh, there comes a, a question that let us suppose if uh, this uh, input frequency and this output frequency initially are uh, differed by a lot of uh, difference in the frequencies let us suppose that then at what range uh, of the input that we have to give so that this particular uh, pll will be able to uh, pull this particular frequency and uh, that frequency can uh, easily be, easily be uh, comes under the tracking range okay so let us suppose that if we are having uh, any uh, sine wave that we are going uh, as a input to this particular uh, pll and if initially it is having its uh, suppose that its uh, uh, frequency is somewhere around 90 megahertz and this uh output of this vco is having its uh, frequency equals to 100 megahertz that time uh, we can't say that whether this 90 megahertz and here it is 100 megahertz uh, whether this much of frequency difference uh, will uh, able to uh, make this filter in a locked condition okay so that we have to keep in mind so basically there are a certain range of frequencies over which the input uh, will cause the loop to lock okay there will be a certain range now, into which you can say that this uh, pll may be able to uh, like uh, uh, means uh, uh, lock the uh, loop okay basically this pll will be in the locked condition uh, for a certain range of frequencies okay of input frequencies okay Uh, and beyond that if uh, there is a too much difference between this two frequency component uh, in the incoming signal and the output of the vco uh, that time uh, this signal will not be in the locked condition ever okay so that we have to understand okay so that particular range of frequencies uh, over which the input will cause the loop to lock is called the pull in or capture range so generally uh, the, the, sometimes there is a uh, problem to understand what is holding a lock range and how this pull in or capture range is different so we try to understand that the capture range uh, generally uh, having a wider uh, width as compared to your holding or lock range so generally the lock range is the frequency over which uh, the input frequencies and the output frequencies are same okay it will be able to track okay whatever be the variation the same variation is going to happen in the output of the vco fine uh, but in the case of uh, pull in or capture range uh, there will be a higher frequency in the input side or uh, that particular frequency can be made this particular filter uh, or pll uh, to go into the lock uh, lock the condition okay so that is the basic differences okay so once you have understood this uh, pll circuit okay uh, then we can see how this pll circuit can be used uh, for the demodulation of the fm signal to try to understand here one point uh, that i have explained that here, here i have taken this uh, signal equals to a sin omega ct plus theta i and here i have taken the b cos omega ct plus theta not so what happens if we had uh, suppose if we had taken this both signal as the uh, cosine signal so that we can uh, look at uh, what is the difference if we take both as a cosine signal okay uh, while discussing this fm demodulation so suppose that uh, we have redrawn this particular uh, pll circuit here in this case okay so here you can see that we are having a phase detector so basically this uh, phase detector blocks can be replaced by this particular circuit okay 
So here we had taken this multiplier followed by a low pass filter. So basically this complete circuit is called as the phase detector, okay? So uh, here uh, in this particular phase detector, we are giving one input as XT, okay? And then uh, after this phase detector, we can also connect an, uh, a particular amplifier of an appropriate gain, okay? Uh, then this output is again uh, fed back uh, through a uh, voltage control oscillator that we have seen in the previous case. So now the input to this multiplier is a signal XT and another signal is VT, which is the output of the voltage control oscillator. So suppose that this XT is our FM signal, for example, okay? So when we are having this XT equals to uh, FM signal and if it is represented by cos omega CT plus phi T, where we know that this uh, uh, phi t will be actually represented by uh, that uh, expression is, uh, if you remember, we have already discussed it, okay? So that we have to, uh, that we have taken phi t equals to two pi kf uh, uh, integration uh, zero to t m tau d tau, okay? That was the expression for the phi t. So first you try to see this one. So let us suppose if x t equals to cos omega ct plus phi t and the VCU output, if you consider it to be cos omega ct plus psi t. So now if these are the two inputs, then obviously the multiplier output will be the multiplication of the two. So again, if you multiply this cos omega ct plus phi t and cos omega ct plus psi t, you are going to get uh, wt equals to half cos uh, phi t minus psi t and cos two omega ct plus phi t uh, plus psi t. So obviously after passing through the low pass filter, this high frequency uh, term will be rejected, okay? And only the uh, term that will be the output of the low pass filter uh, will be uh, your half cos phi t minus psi t. So here you can see that the output of the low pass filter that uh, if we represent it by uh, E1t, then this E1t will be equals to half cos phi t uh, minus psi t, okay? And now here you can see that uh, whenever uh, we have uh, the input and the output uh, means uh, uh, whenever we have a uh, phase error equals to zero, suppose suppose that uh, phi t equals to psi t, let us suppose whatever be the input that we are giving to the multiplier, uh, if its uh, phase uh, is synchronized with the phase of uh, this output of the VCO VT, uh, then basically this output uh, of the low pass filter E1t should be zero. This is what we have seen in the previous case, uh, in the case of phase detector, it should give the zero output because both are phase synchronized, okay? So, but if if we have taken both signal as a cos cos, okay? Then what we can see from this expression is even t equals to half cos uh, phi t minus psi t. If you substitute this phase error phi t minus psi t equals to zero, uh, this term will be uh, coming as half cos uh, zero. And we know that the cos zero equals to uh, one. So this even t that we were supposed to get zero, here we are going to get the maximum value, okay? We are going to get the maximum value. So basically, uh, because of that, uh, what we need to have in this case is, uh, this particular uh, feedback path should be able to provide a 90 degree phase shift, okay? That we had taken already in this uh, previous discussion, if you remember, uh, we had taken this input as equals to A sine omega CT and then uh, this feedback signal, uh, which is coming through the VCA, uh, VCO uh, is actually a 90 degree phase shifted version of the input signal, okay? We have taken uh, this uh, two signal uh, in the phase quadrature, okay? So uh, similarly, again, if we had taken, suppose here it is uh, like instead of taking cos, if we have taken sine, then obviously the result that we are going to get is sine. And therefore, uh, we need to have this loop that should be able to provide you uh, pi by two phase shift, okay? Uh, that will be giving you the proper output. So that's why we had taken the uh, sine or uh, sine and cosine uh, signals uh, to the multiplier input, okay? So now onwards, what we have to uh, think that uh, this particular uh, loop is actually providing the pi by two phase shift uh, so that the output of the VCO is going to be sine omega CT plus psi T, okay, instead of uh, VT. So that will be uh, going to log the phase in, uh, basically uh, that is going to uh, log the loop in the phase quadrature, okay. So now you try to see this one. So basically this will be our 
uh, like we can redraw this circuit in which we can write this as a GS. Okay, uh, forward path transfer function, and here it is the feedback path transfer function. Then the output can be represented as V one T. Here it is X one T, E two T. Okay, and like that. So basically, it is nothing but a. Uh, uh, basically, uh, we studied in the control system that uh, we are having a feedback system. So here it is again a feedback system whose function is to uh, means adjust the uh, input uh, in such a way that this. Error is going to be zero. Okay, so that this feedback signal and the incoming signal should be equal, and therefore this uh, error signal should be equals to zero. Okay, so this, this error signal should be equals to zero. So here now we can see that if we had taken a default means uh, FM signal. Okay, if XT suppose that it, if it is equals to ST or cos omega CT phi T, and if it is a FM signal, then uh, phi t that we have defined is equals to 2 pi kf0 to t m tau d tau. The output of the VCO is uh, vt equals to av sin omega ct plus uh, psi t. Okay, this is what we have already taken. So uh, here, this psi t, uh, if you define, okay, this psi t will be equals to 2 pi kv and it will be 0 to t y tau d tau. So what is this y? Here, this y t is the output of this particular uh, PLL circuit. So, because this yt is actually uh, enters into this VCO, okay, this is the output uh, uh, output signal. So, this output signal is uh, acting as external voltage to the voltage control oscillator. So, when we uh, writing this uh, expression output of the VCO vt equals to AB sin omega ct plus psi t, uh, then this psi t will be defined by 2 pi kV, uh, 0 to t, uh, y tau and d tau. Okay, where this KV represents again the uh, voltage sensitivity of the voltage control oscillators in units of uh, hertz per unit volt. So now, if this is the expression for the psi t, if you differentiate this expression of the psi t, uh, the differentiation value uh, that we are going to get is psi s t that will be equals to two pi KV uh, y t. Okay, it is very easy to get. So we can further write this expression equals to psi s t equals to uh, capital K1 y t where K1 we have defined equals to 2 pi K V. Now, similarly, if you uh, calculate the output of the low pass filter, okay, this is our low pass filter. Uh, I told you that uh, after the multiplication of the two, uh, the output that we are going to get is equals to, uh, here I have forget to write uh, the magnitude equals to AC. So please uh, do write here, it is AC, okay? So it will be the multiplication of the two. So AC multiplied with AV divided by two, okay? And then uh, we are going to get the sine function, the sine uh, phi t minus psi t we are going to get. And basically uh, I told you that this low pass filter will reject the high frequency component, okay? Uh, to omega C term. And then when uh, this signal is actually passed through this filter, if we have, uh, let us say the impulse response of this low pass filter denoted by HT, then the convolution between these two signal uh, is representing the output T. Okay, you are, I think you must be aware that uh, how to calculate the output uh, from any LTI system, any linear, linear time invariant system. So we have to take the uh, convolution between the input and the impulse response of the system. So this way we will be able to calculate the value of uh, even T at the output of the low pass filter. Now, uh, if we calculate the even T, then the output of this amplifier that will be our YT. So YT will be given as uh, simply it is the multiplication of the gain of the amplifier GA multiplied with the even T. Now we have already defined this uh, base error theta ET. So this theta ET will be equals to uh, phi T minus psi T that we have already know. So theta phi T minus psi T. So now if you uh, just try to substitute uh, this equals to theta ET into this particular expression. So uh, if you uh, do that, we are going to get uh, this expression uh, of YT. Okay, I'm just substituting this even T from uh, this particular expression to this yt expression okay so yt expression that we are going to get is equals to ac av ga divided by 2 sine and then uh, i'm just replacing uh, phi t minus it equals to theta et so it will be theta et then convolving with the ht 
Now here we can do a certain modification. I am just replacing this uh, with another constant equals to k2. So we can write y t equals to k2 sine theta et uh, involved with the ht. Okay. So now suppose that if uh, this uh, input phase, okay, and the uh, means uh, the phase of the incoming signal, uh, okay, and then the uh, another incoming signal from the VCO, if we, both the phase are uh, almost same, okay. So if it is uh, in the, uh, like uh, you can say that uh, the phase uh, are in the locked condition, in that case, what happens is this phi t minus psi t, if it is having a very small uh, error, okay, if it is very small error, then at that time, what we can say that this magnitude of this small error theta et will be much, much smaller than unity, okay? It will be much, much smaller than unity because we have to, in the logged condition, whenever this PLL is in the, in the logged condition, at that time, uh, the phase error will be very small. It should be very small. Uh, ideally, it should be equals to zero. So let us suppose if the phase error is very small for all the time, at that time, we can write this sine theta et, uh, that will be equals to theta et. So uh, what does it mean that uh, this uh, phase uh, of this output of the VCO, that is psi t is almost equals to the phase of the uh, incoming signal xt. So what we can write is psi t is almost equals to phi t, okay? And therefore, even if you calculate the differentiation of, uh, if you differentiate this expression, we are going to get psi dash t, that will be equals to phi dash t. Now we have already defined what is phi t. So phi t is equals to two by kf uh, integration over zero to t m tau d tau. And then if you calculate the uh, phi dash t means if you differentiate this expression, uh, we are going to get phi dash t equals to two pi kf mt. Now uh, what we can have is we are having this particular expression, okay, of psi dash t equals to k one y t. Then here I can substitute uh, because we know that psi dash t is equals to phi dash t, okay, uh, for all the time t, then I can substitute in this particular expression, uh, psi dash t equals to 2 pi kf mt. And then I can calculate the value of phi t. So here we can get this phi t equals to psi dash t divided by k1, and psi dash t can be replaced by 2 pi kf mt. So 2 pi kf mt divided by k1. So finally, that uh, equation that we are going to get is, uh, yt is actually we are going to get is proportional to uh, mt. So here uh, we are able to prove that in this case that in the case of PLL, if the input signal is uh, our FN signal and if this particular uh, PLL circuit is in the logged condition, then this output yt is going to be proportional to our uh, masses signal. So this is how we actually demodulate uh, a frequency modulated signal using the PLL circuit, okay, into uh, in which this output yt is going to be proportional to mt. Uh, and now I can just uh, redraw this equivalent circuit for by using these particular equations, okay. Here we have this uh, expression of psi dash t, and uh, here we have this particular equation theta et phi t minus psi t, okay. And uh, also we have this particular expression of y t equals to kt sine theta et uh, and uh, uh, convolved with the ht. Just uh, following these expressions, okay, theta et equals to phi t minus psi t and y t equals to kt sine theta et convolved with ht and psi dash t equals to k1 uh, y t. I can just redraw an equivalent PLL circuit. So here we can see that we have the input as uh, the phase of the uh, like uh, uh, incoming signals, okay? So phi t and psi t. So if we subtract, we are going to get the theta et. Now we have to calculate the sine theta et, okay? So sine theta et, we have to calculate and then this sine theta et should be multiplied with the uh, another constant k2. So this multiplier will have the another input equals to k2. Now this signal, okay? This signal has to be passed through a uh, low pass filter with its impulse response of ht. So that is going to give you output equals to yt. So basically this expression is our yt. So here we are able to realize this yt. Now uh, we have already seen that uh, we have defined this uh, side st equals to k1 yt. So therefore uh, this 
uh, from this y t itself, y t we can write uh, write this as equals to psi dash t divided by k one. So from this expression, okay, from this expression, how to calculate the uh, uh, psi t? Because we have to realize the psi t. So basically, what we have to do is if we integrate it, okay, if we multiply it with the k one, okay, uh, we are going to get the uh, psi t. So here we have another block in this feedback path, and by having this feedback path, if we integrate this. Uh, output signal and if we multiply it with the signal k1 we are able to uh, get back this particular phase term psi t and this way we will be uh, we can have another equivalent circuit for the uh, pll so i hope you must be able to understand how this uh, pll circuit can be used for uh, the demodulation of the uh, fm signal uh, today i am just taking another 5 or 10 minutes to discuss one more topic uh, which is very important a uh, topic in the, in this particular analog communication which is called as the frequency division multiplexing so as i told you that uh, uh, like uh, in am case okay uh, in am case i have already explained you so many modulation schemes like dsbsc double side band suppressed carrier modulation scheme double side band modulation scheme which is also called as conventional am uh then we are having uh, like uh, ssbsc okay a single sideband suppressed carrier bsb modulation we have seen the uh, frequency modulation in which we have already seen like uh, what is uh, like phase modulation what is frequency modulation okay uh, so we are having so many modulation schemes uh, now uh, what we can do is uh, basically we can uh, uh like uh, uh, suppose that we are having a uh, large number of uh, radio stations okay and suppose that uh, if the radio stations uh, uh if if it if it is fm radio station or it is a am radio stations if we want uh, to multiplex a large number of stations okay because we are having a certain uh, channel bandwidth okay we are having a certain channel bandwidth or you can say that the Uh, by uh, we are having a certain medium through which we want to send our signals so we are not just sending a single uh, means only single station okay uh, as we know that uh, from the different uh, radio stations so many uh, uh, means uh, uh, radio signals are actually transmitted simultaneously okay so many radio stations are actually transmitting uh this radio stations simultaneously that we have to try to understand that uh, in the same channel we are having so many radio stations so how these so many radio uh, radio stations are actually being sent okay uh, be, without uh, disturbing each other that we have to understand okay uh, so without disturbing each other and not only that uh, even after the transmission we are able to separate out a particular radio station whatever we want so suppose uh, if we are having total n number of such channels let us say we are having uh, n number of such channels that we want to uh, n number of such radio stations that we want to send that basically in the frequency division multiplexing uh, first very first block that we have to use is a low pass filter so this is called or this is also called, called as the a uh, band limiting filter so basically what we try to do is we have to first uh, limit the uh, bandwidth of the uh, input matches signal okay uh, up to which we want to send the uh, information for example if we want to send the voice signal uh, then generally uh, we uh, want to restrict the uh, message bandwidth up to uh, 5 kilohertz and we have to uh, means uh, filter out all the higher frequency component similarly if you want to send the audio frequency in the case of fm uh, what we do is we restrict the uh, maximum frequency uh, component up to 20 kilohertz any frequency component uh, greater than 20 kilohertz must be filtered out so what is the purpose of this low pass filter we have to first uh, band limit the message signal okay up to a certain value and all the higher frequency component has to be rejected okay so in this way first we have to pass the uh, particular message signal through the low pass filter and then this uh, band limited message signal has to be applied to a particular modulator okay these modulators can be any modulator for example it can be a conventional am it can be a dsbsc 
okay it can be ssbsc it can be vsbsc or it can also be an fm signal okay so uh, means uh, fm modulators or it is maybe a pm modulators phase modulators so accordingly we have to choose a particular appropriate carrier okay a particular modulation scheme so after uh, having this modulation scheme uh, the signal has to be passed through a band pass filter okay and then uh, this particular modulated signal has to be sent through a common channel so you remember that uh, when we choosing a particular uh, carrier frequency okay the carrier frequency should be selected such that uh, the spectrum of this modulated signal should not be overlapping okay so it should be uh, occupying a separate band in frequency space you remember that it should occupy a separate band of frequencies okay in the frequency space uh, by choosing the appropriate carrier for modulation, okay, uh, so that uh, this should not be overlapping. If it is overlapping, obviously we cannot filter it out, okay. We cannot separate out the uh, two different stations, okay. So that we have to keep in mind, and so accordingly we have to select the carrier uh, frequency. And then these signals can be sent through a common channel. So whenever it is uh, means uh, transmitted through a common channel, because it is it is already separated in frequency space. Uh, these signals are not going to interfere each other. And now uh, the same signals uh, can be uh, means uh, received by this receiver antenna and then it will be passed through an appropriate band pass filter and then a demodulator circuit will be used and a particular carrier that we have already used at the transmitter side, the same carrier should be used at the demodulator and uh, to demodulate the original masses signal okay or to demodulate the particular uh, radio stations okay uh, and the other uh, radio station should be select uh, means uh, rejected okay so only at this output of the low pass filter the radio station one will be uh, selected okay at this two uh, at this second output only radio station two will be selected okay similarly at this uh, point we are going to only select the uh, radio station uh, N. Nth radio station will be selected. And all other radio stations should be uh, rejected. That we have to remember. So uh, this can be only performed by choosing an appropriate uh, like a modulation scheme and appropriate uh, carrier. Okay. So and accordingly, we have to perform the demodulation at the other end uh, to separate out the particular uh, radio stations. Okay. So for example, uh, uh, if we take one example for uh, in this case, uh, in the case of frequency division multiplexing, let us suppose if we want to send this uh, three message signals M1T, M2T, and M3T from three different radio stations. Okay, then what happens is if we are sending the three different radio stations, then first of all, this message signal M1T should be passed through a low pass filter. Let us suppose it is having a certain bandwidth. Okay, it is uh, this message is having a certain bandwidth, and after that. Uh, bandwidth uh, this uh, has to be passed through a particular modulator m1 okay modulator one so uh, this modulator is having its carrier frequency equals to f1 similarly uh, some other radio station is having its message m2 which has to be passed through a low pass filter to band limit the uh, bandwidth of the message signal so let us say this is the message signal uh, bandwidth and then this message signal has to be applied to a modulator two and then this modulator, uh, this modulation scheme can be anything. You remember that it can be a combination of uh, DSBSC, it can be SSBSC, it can be VSB, okay, or even it can be FM, okay. So here we have to take another frequency uh, uh, carrier equals to F2, okay. Similarly, we are having third message M3. Again, it has to be band limited, okay, by passing through the low pass filter, and then uh, it has to be passed through a, a modulator three, okay, whose uh, input frequency is equals to. Uh, F3 means carrier frequency is equals to F3. So remember, if you perform the modulation, okay, once you have performed the modulation, based on the modulation, uh, if you uh, see the spectrum of all the modulated uh, modulated wave together, then we are going to get this scheme uh, something like this. Uh, we are considering that uh, this uh, F1 is less than F2 and F3. So basically, F3 is the maximum frequency carrier, okay. F3 is uh, greater than F2 and F1, and similarly, F2 is greater than F1, and it is less than F3, and F1 is uh, the least value, okay? Least carrier frequency. 
so uh, if, if if suppose if we have modulated the signals and we have appropriately uh, selected this frequency i uh, means uh, if we have uh, selected this carrier frequency uh, carrier frequencies uh, appropriately that time this type of spectrum we are going to uh, uh, observe uh, in the output okay in the multiplex signal i mean to say that uh, in the multiplex signal we are uh, going to have this type of a spectrum so basically what we can see because of this carrier frequency uh, the bandwidth of the modulated signal okay this bandwidth of the modulated signals are not overlapping it is not overlapping it is having some frequency separation okay it is having certain frequency separation so uh, whatever be the uh, frequency separation between the two subsequent uh, radio station uh, this frequency separation is uh, called as guard band okay you remember that it is called as the guard band okay uh, similarly this guard band can be a constant okay between the two radio stations or it can be a variable also okay so most of the cases when we form a numerical problems uh, whatever be given in the statement that you have to take care whether it is a constant guard band or if it is a variable guard band that you have to take care so most of the cases you will find that the guard band is a constant okay so it will be a, a representing the separation between the two subsequent uh, radio stations now suppose if you want to calculate what will be the uh, bandwidth of the uh, total bandwidth requirement of the frequency division uh, multiplex signal okay fdm signal then if you want to calculate the total bandwidth of the fdm signal so obviously you have to subtract the maximum frequency component to the minimum frequency component that is going to give you the total bandwidth of the fdm signal so uh, if you want to calculate total bandwidth uh, how it can also be calculated by calculating uh, some of the uh, all the bandwidths of the individual stations if you know uh, what is the bandwidth occupied by this particular radio station m1 m2 and m3 you have to add them all this bandwidths okay you have to add this all the bandwidths of individual radio station then again you have to add the uh, what is the total guard band for example here uh, we are just trying to send the three radio stations so there will be two guard bands okay one from the radio station uh, one guard band between radio stations m2 and m1 okay and then another guard band that will exist between uh, radio station f3 and uh, m3 and uh, m1 so this will be our guard band so what is the total guard band that also has to be added and then we can calculate the total bandwidth so i hope you must be able to understand that what is this frequency division multiplexing so you try to uh, uh, means uh, see uh, how this uh, fdm scheme is actually uh, utilized in uh, sending the so many radio stations uh, together uh, with the same channel as we know that so many radio stations like am radio stations or fm radio stations uh, is actually being transmitted uh, in the same uh, medium like it is transmitted through air and uh, and those channels or those radio stations are not uh, overlapping and uh, that can be separated out uh, individually uh, based on their carrier frequency so when we are having a multiplex signal uh, an appropriate uh, demodulation scheme has to be chosen and an appropriate carrier has to be chosen uh, to demodulate and uh, uh, means to select the only one of the radio station suppose if you want to select only f1 at the demodulator and uh, while demodulating you have to choose the carrier frequency equals to f1 and then only you will be able to uh, recover back this particular radio station uh, m1 okay similarly if you want to select the radio station m2 uh, your carrier frequency should be equals to f2 uh, at the radio uh, receiver end fine so i hope this discussion must be clear if you found any difficulty if you have any query uh, please feel free to drop me a message in the comment box so thank you for watching this video and uh, stay connected for uh, more updates so thank you for watching